For thousands of years, First Nations peoples have walked on this land. As we gather, we acknowledge that we stand on the traditional territory of the Kalaman Nation. May we live with respect, peace, and friendship on this land. Well, I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day, whether you are a biological mother or a mother in spirit. Hope you're having a good day. I'm going to light the candle from the light of the murdered and missing women and girls, two-spirited and now boys and men. This is an excerpt from Praying with the Earth, a prayer book for peace by John Philip Newell. Light within all light, soul behind all souls, at the breaking of dawn, at the coming of day, we wait and watch, your light within the morning light, your soul within the human soul, your presence beckoning to us from the heart of life. In the dawning of this day, let us know fresh shinings in our soul. In the growing colors of new beginnings all around us, let us know the first lights of our heart. Great star of the morning, inner flame of the universe, let us be a color in this new dawning. And let us pray. Merciful God, our hearts are troubled. We long for a world free of hate and destruction. We yearn to know your presence in our daily lives as we awaken and sleep, as we play and work, as we eat and pray in moments mundane and profound. Receive us, shelter us, and nurture us as your beloved people for your purposes and to your glory. Amen. Let us say together the prayer of Jesus. For God is like our mother, and God is like our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I have a poem, and it's an excerpt from Ruth Burgess' uh, Spring, and it's called Unsung by Carol Dixon. Mom was always singing around the house as she dusted or washed and dried the dishes and made the dinner, and when I did my homework or read up in my room, I heard the sound in the distance and felt a little less alone as though I had my very own guardian angel watching over me, wide as the ocean, deep as the deepest sea. One day the singing stopped. I wondered why then realized she knew that I had grown up. I have my own songs now to sing. And let us listen to, from More Voices, number 150, Spirit God Be Our Breath. And this is sung by Spirit Rising from uh, Bedford United Church in Bedford, Nova Scotia. And Rick Gunn is the director. Let us listen. Yeah. 
reaching out, joining hands as we share. We seek your guidance to friendship and care. Loving God, be our prayer. Spirit, God, be our breath, be our song. Flow through love us, bringing strength to move on. Through change, through challenge, we'll greet the new dawn. Spirit, God, be our song. Good day, everyone. Today's reading from the present is an excerpt from Rainbow of Mysteries. Norman Habel writes, I am not only a human being, I am also an earth being, one among millions of other earth beings, past and present and future. And I am composed of the same matter that makes this planet what it is. I am an earth child, born on earth, and made of earth. I am made of the very clay that permeates this planet. Or, as Joanna Macy says in Gaia Meditations, matter is made of rock and soil. It is pulled by the magma that circulates through our planet's heart and roots such molecules in bi biology. Earth pours through us, replacing each cell in the body every seven years. We ingest and excrete Earth, are made from Earth. I am that. You are that. I belong to a fragile web of interconnected and interdependent fragments and forces on this planet, and the matter that emanated from primordial times in the cosmos evolved into conscious earth beings who reflect the spiritual embedded in the material. Matter and spirit are not separate. And the scripture reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verses 55 through 60. At that point they went wild a rioting mob of cat calls and whistles and invective. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, hardly noticed. He only had eyes for God, whom he saw in all his glory, with Jesus standing at his side. He said, Oh, I see heaven wide open, and the Son of Man standing at God's side. Yelling and hissing, the mob drowned him out. Now in full stampede, they dragged him out of town and pelted him with rocks. The ringleaders took off their coats and asked a young man named Saul to watch them. As the rocks rained down, Stephen prayed, Master Jesus, take my life. Then he knelt down, praying loud enough for everyone to hear. Master, don't blame them for this sin. His last words. Then he died. Our song is from More Voices, number 79. Spirit, open my heart sung by St. Paul's United Church Choir, Riverview, New Brunswick, Brenda Barnes, Director.
The message is called Mothering Earth. Let us pray. Faithful God, be our refuge in all of our living. Help us when we stumble. Grow us into the fullness of life with all people. For your will be done. This we pray. Amen. Well, I wonder how we can get from today's reading about stoning martyrdom and forgiveness to motherhood, nurturing, and loving care. These concepts couldn't be further from the truth and further apart. When I think of my mother, I am reminded of a woman who loved the seashore. Not only the clam digging and gathering snails clinging to the wet rocks, but for finding and collecting colorful stones. Not for throwing, but for sharing. And they made interesting conversation pieces, especially with children. My mother loved children and nurtured not only her own, but many children in our neighborhood as well. She sacrificed so much for herself, of herself for others and was very forgiving. Being faced with the pandemic of today, I've been discerning about mothering earth. The term mothering earth can be understood, I think, in two ways. The first is how we are or are not providing good stewardship to the earth. Through our behaviors, we have taken so much and not given enough care back. I wonder what kind of mothering nurture are we providing the earth? Given the outcry of young people, I believe we are getting a failing grade. Industry and consumerism is overpowering the natural healing abilities of the earth. Which brings us to the second way of understanding the term mothering earth. Earth nurtures us. God's directive when creating the earth was that there, there be a fine balance between the air, water, and earth creatures. It has been my observation that the earth is a place of balance. An example, as any hunter of rabbits would observe, is the seasons of rabbits and foxes, when the rabbit population is plentiful. The foxes will multiply and cull the rabbits. When the rabbit population decreases, then the foxes don't produce as many pups. That is, until the rabbits increase in number, then the cycle begins all over again. Since the COVID-19 pandemic has taking o taken over the world and has forced most of the human race to remain at home, away from factories and industrial plants, the earth has had an opportunity in just a couple of months to clear the air of a large amount of pollution that has been damaging the atmosphere. The visuals from the space station show the proof of this phenomena, especially over parts of China. We humans arrogantly forget that we are very much a part of nature. We are of nature, of the earth, and yet we fail to think this way. Through trying to control this world, we end up being reactive when we notice an imbalance with Mothering Earth. We mess up when we try to manually repair some of the damage. And there ends up being more consequences. Are we playing at being God? An example of this is introducing the foreign entity, a foreign entity, into an environment that has no natural predators. We create an imbalance. I think of Australia introducing rabbits for meat into the environment, and of course, having no natural predator, the country became overrun with rabbits. They took over. Canadian, Canadian examples are the Asian carp and zebra mussels. They both have a devastating effect on the eco ecosystem. We Christians have a reputation for being more focused on the afterlife, with little or no consideration to our present living situation and how we are disrespecting the environment. With all 
of the non-biodegradable garbage we are throwing into the natural world. Isn't that similar to stoning the earth? This week, during your telephone talks, discuss what you can do to bring a focus on how you can change your mindset from living in the hereafter to living in the present. How might you work together even better once we are together again to approach saving the environment in our small corner of the world? Let us sing along or listen to More Voices number 145, Draw the Circle Wide, sung by St. Paul's United Church Choir, Riverview, New Brunswick, Brenda Barnes, the director. Let us listen. our blessing. Whatever this earth life bestows on us, remember that God remains faithfully present. For as Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. So as we scatter from the, this time of worship, go forth committing your life into God's hands. Go forth knowing that you are God's people. Go forth knowing that God's mercy abounds and that you are precious in God's sight. Go knowing God's face shines upon us and that God's love for us is ever true. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. <laughs>